Welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Linker. To start off this workshop session, I'd like to give an overview of the current state of bioformats, along with an introduction to some of our plans for the near future. We talk a lot about bioformats, but for anyone not familiar, it is primarily a Java library that reads files in many different imaging formats. In addition to providing unified access to the image data from over 140 different formats, it also critically provides the acquisition information that is associated with the images. The result is a single API that can give you an image, the time at which it was acquired, which objective was used, and any other acquisition information defined by the OME data model, independent of the file format and in any application that supports Java. To facilitate this, Bioformats implements the OME XML schema, the formal definition of what we call the OME data model, and thus provides a complete reference implementation of the two formats that we develop ourselves, OME XML and OME TIFF. To briefly summarize some of the history here, we're now in our 11th year of actively developing bioformats. Initially, it was used as a plugin for ImageJ, but adoption by Almero and development of a MATLAB toolbox soon followed. Over the years, our focus has moved from adding lots of new formats very quickly, to thorough parsing and standardization of metadata, to performance, and finally better engagement with the developer community and in-depth work in specific imaging domains in conjunction with other OME projects such as IDR, the latter being a major focus to date this year, along with defining what the next generation of the OME data model will look like. For a more quantitative look at the history, you can see in red at the top how the number of supported formats has increased from 43 in 2006 to 142 today. The plateau here reflects our current emphasis on more structural improvements over adding new file formats, unless a decline in the number of new formats in the wild. An estimate of the number of users is in yellow in the middle, which shows fairly steady growth for the years in which we have reliable data though unfortunately, we don't currently have complete estimates for 2015 and 2016. You can also see the number of contributors in blue at the bottom. This is the number of people in OME and from the community who have authored at least one Git commit that has passed our code review and continuous integration testing. This number has grown from just a few in 2006 to 27 in 2015 and 19 to date in 2016. A large factor in this increase in contributors is the fact that we now have a much larger percentage of the whole OME team engaged in working on bioformats. Everyone shown here is now regularly involved in some combination of writing or reviewing code changes and documentation, answering questions on the mailing list, planning new features, and generally making sure that the whole project runs smoothly. We're really excited to have expanded the active team as this lets us branch out into different areas in parallel which I'll talk more about in a bit. So with that background, what can you do now? As I've mentioned, reading images and metadata is the main function. Early versions targeted light microscopy specifically, but we've since expanded to include medical imaging, electron microscopy, high content screening, whole slide imaging, FLIM, and SPIM. Development in several of these domains is often driven by specific projects, such as Imperial College's FlimFit analysis software for FLIM data, the Virtual Microscope System at the University of Dundee for whole site imaging, and the IDR project for high content screening. All of these domains still use the same API, which means that the code to retrieve an image and its timestamp looks the same no matter which format you're working with and whether you're using Java, an ImageJ macro, MATLAB, the Python bioformats extension developed by the Cell Profiler team, or the R bioformats extension being developed at the EMBL. Beyond support for specific file formats, Bioformats also provides extensions to perform various commonly useful tasks behind the scenes without changing the API calls needed after a reader is created. Those tasks include saving the state of an initialized reader to a file, grouping individual files into a single dataset, 
and ensuring that images are returned in a specific consistent layout or order. All OME software using bioformats makes extensive use of these so-called reader wrappers. The most useful reader wrapper that we have at the moment is called Memoizer. It uses the cryo library to serialize the reader's state to a file on disk. Any memoizer that is used to initialize the same file later on will then load the cached state from disk instead of reinitializing from scratch. For very large datasets, this is particularly useful as it brings the reinitialization time down from potentially several minutes to a few milliseconds. Another frequently used wrapper is File Stitcher, which allows multiple files to be read as a single dataset by using a regular expression influenced pattern string to specify the files to be grouped together. This is heavily used by the IDR project and most useful for files that do not have readable metadata describing the number of Z sections, channels, and or time points. In particular, we found that file stitcher is often instrumental in working with things like single plane TIFFs that have been exported from acquisition or third-party analysis software. The last category of wrappers includes things that guarantee a specific order or layout to the images returned by a reader. The default behavior of the base image reader is to return images as close to how they were stored in the original file as possible. For instance, files containing RGB images will result in a single image containing three color components being returned. A file containing three separately acquired channels, however, would result in three separate grayscale images being returned. This means that anything using bioformats needs to be able to handle both return types, which is not always intuitive. To make this a little easier, either channel separator or channel merger can be used. Channel separator guarantees that only single channel grayscale images will be returned. RGB images are separated into three different images. Channel merger returns grayscale images only when a single channel is present. Otherwise, all channels are merged together and returned as a single image. And now finally, any of these wrappers can be chained together so that multiple operations will occur at once. The order does matter somewhat as each wrapper operates only on what is passed to its constructor and does not have awareness of any parent wrappers. Over the last year, we've been working on several lines of development in parallel. On the 5.1 line, we've implemented a number of bug fixes across many readers, as well as updating many readers to use the new units feature in the 2015-01 OME XML schema. We've also changed how Omero and Bioformats are developed together so that both can be released independently. And finally, we've added a lot of new documentation for developers. There have also been a number of contributions from the community, including improvements to several existing readers, updates to the MATLAB toolbox, support for Octave, and better validation of OME XML metadata. On the 5.2 line, there has been a lot of work on the OME data model, some details of which will be covered later in the workshop, and we'd be happy to discuss in more depth with anyone interested. Related to this, we've updated how the data model code is generated from the OME XML schema so that it is more intuitive and maintainable. Based on analysis of usage statistics, the 5.2 line removes support for Java 6, although this is still supported in 5.1.10. Finally, we've made logging usage and configuration more consistent so that logging can be completely configured even when bioformats is used in ImageJ or MATLAB. On the IDR line, we've done a lot of work to reduce import and image loading times for HCS datasets. The Opera Flex Reader has also been updated to allow for a wider range of acquisition types, including multiple runs of the same plate. We've also expanded Bioformat's file grouping capabilities to allow files without acquisition metadata to be grouped into a single plate. Finally, it's the time of year when we start planning what the next year or so of work will look like. At the moment, our top priorities involve refining the data model that underpins Bioformats, and making OME file formats friendlier to work with. We're currently working to simplify, document, and promote new data model features such as the map annotation type and units attached to many metadata values. We're also streamlining the data model development process so that new features can be added more easily. 
Next up today, Sebastian Besson will discuss some of the finer points of working with OME TIFF and the data model. And after that, we should have plenty of time for any questions or topics you would like to raise today. We'd be happy to answer any questions now.